Well, thank you for accepting the offer to have this conversation with you, Phil. I get $100 for this, right? Only problem is I'm broke. You know, before you put us in the movie, Mr. Hollywood, you know, where's the rent? What was I going to do? I had sold everything. What else could I sell? I got a phone call from a guy named Joe. So how much do you need for this movie? No last name. Just Joe. So we're going to make a motion picture. I decided I want art to be an important part of my life. Angelica, you could be the star of my movie. Such beauty and grace. You're happy to see me because your face brightens when I come around. You finished? Well, thank you for accepting the offer to have this conversation with you, Phil. You know, uh, we met like 12 years ago and I had the chance and the honor of you know, getting to know a cinematographer like you, it's really, you know, uh, very precious for me because to meet someone whose movies are an influence on you and his cinematography, his work is an influence on you, is amazing. Anyway, so let me cut straight to the uh, point. So first, uh, you know, I got a couple of questions to ask you. So I'm curious about uh, how you got a break in in the filmmaking industry i mean how did you start out in the industry i know your story that you started as a photographer but what made you decide so that you can start in the filmmaking business can you tell me about your uh, you know original story the roots of how you started the roots of how i started well i mean i i uh I was interested in photography since I was a, a young kid. I um, I took still photographs when I was in high school and uh, sold some of them. and And then I would then uh, I, I, I uh, as I was growing up, I sort of uh, put it aside for a while. I wasn't I wasn't something I considered as a way of earning a living. Uh, but uh, later on, I think after uh, after high school, I, I had some friends who were making home movies and I they chose me as a cinematographer because I knew about photography. And cinematography and photography are very similar in the sense that they both use the same, te uh, same uh, technology, but they are quite different in the way that they render uh, images. Uh, a still photograph obviously doesn't have the illusion of motion, which film does. But uh, to get back to the point, I, you know, I, I became more interested in it as I uh, got older. I had a, uh, I had a couple of girlfriends who were really interested in foreign films, and I began to see, um, the, you know, the French New Wave and uh, the, the Japanese uh, New Wave and. It, it was uh, very interesting to me. Uh, and then when I had some friends who were making a film, they chose me to help them. And then later I decided to go to to, uh, to uh, graduate school uh, in communications. And I they had a film lab there and I spent a lot of time in it. And I learned, uh, I, basically, I really didn't have any teachers. I had a teacher who taught, who was interested in, documentary cinema and you know sort of steered me in terms of watching the right movies or watching movies that were interesting to him and I became more and more interested in it and then I'm I'm actually when I was in school uh I met a, a, a man named Garrett Brown who you may know who he is who was the uh, he saw some of the uh, work that I was doing, and he and he had a, a, a production company, and he asked me to uh, uh, if I would be interested in shooting in uh, for him. They he did commercials, and nobody had ever offered me uh, actually uh, money for my work before <laughs> that time, and you know, so uh, it was really interesting. I, I I discovered that actually I could earn some money doing something I really like to do. Heretofore, I, I don't think I was ever I ever found a job that I, I really uh, enjoyed doing, and finally I found actually a way to earn a living in a way that uh, didn't make me crazy. So 
I started shooting for Garrett, and then I uh, uh, that was uh, in uh, in Philadelphia, and then I moved to New York, and I uh, started shooting films. Actually, I put on Facebook this week if you've seen it. Yeah, you I've see seen the film I put on. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that movie, and uh, I think you worked in the early in the sixties or early seventies with Garrett. I know that because. I, I saw a you know a photo of you and Garrett in the 70s I guess with a camera so uh, was it before uh, when Garrett Brown invented the steady cam or was it after well, actually he was in, I mean I started working with him before he invented the steady cam and then I was with him uh, I was working for him when, during the time that he was working on it and invented it And actually, I was with him the day that he got a, a telegram from Stanley Kubrick saying that, you know, that his device was incredible and he would really like to use it on The Shining, which ultimately yeah. they which ultimately he did. Uh, uh, so, uh, yeah, after I had, you know, when I was uh, uh, sort of during that same period of time, I, I, I got a, a, a grant from the National Endowment for the Arts to do this little film of which uh, which you see you can see actually on uh YouTube it's called uh, uh, the, uh, the New Jersey Meadowlands and it was uh it was really uh at the time it was very unusual looking because I had I chose to shoot it on uh on a film stock that was not used in 16 millimeter before that everybody was using uh reversal film to shoot yeah. 16 millimeter films and i was able to uh uh use uh for the first time actually kodak released color negative on uh, in a 16 millimeter format this was a, one of the first films ever shot on uh color negative and the colors are extraordinary and the film was pretty good and i started showing it around and i began to get work as a documentary cameraman And I spent kind of years doing that. And that was your first movie, that musical documentary. That the, that probably was by the first film that I directed by myself. Oh, you also directed wrote. and filmed it. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I'm, I'm so, going uh, to try to watch it. Huh? You try to watch uh, it. Uh, It's good. Yeah, yeah. And, Unfortunately, uh, the quality of the reproduction that I was able to do because I didn't have a lot of money, it's the transfer to uh, to the tape is uh, sort of low end 1965 uh, telecine. So it's not, you know, it could be a lot better if I had the money to do it. But yeah. I'm kind of at this point in my life, I'm uh, sort of saving my pennies doing other things. Yeah. <laughs> I know that some of your photography works are stored in the Getty Museum, and I'm an admirer of your photography work as well. Because yeah. you know, when I look, take a look at your photographs, I think that they are taken in in the present time. But then I just check the time that you sh took that picture, that photograph, and it says, you know, 70s. But it's like your photographs are taking me, you know, back in time but it's like it's now but they are not now there is something unique oh, something you. timelessness about your photography that's what i like about your photographs and back to the film industry um the next question i'm curious about i know that you work in different genres like you worked in a uh, sci-fi like cyborg tree you worked in two or three westerns and those westerns are amazing I loved, you know, you gave me the DVD of Barrowers, the Western you made in 2008. And I love that Western a lot. And then you made another Western uh, called Timber. And I, I also like that a lot because they are very, you know, minimalistic and they are very story driven, character driven uh, Westerns. And the way you filmed those uh, Westerns are very unique to me because you filmed in anamorphic or cinemascope. I don't recall that part, but you filmed digitally. And I know also you also worked for Jean-Claude Van Damme. You made two or three movies with him. You made um, movies with uh, Steve Buscemi. Am I pronouncing his surname uh, correctly? I don't know, but yes, you worked in the uh, independent filmmaker 
filmmaking industry a lot and you work in the Hollywood system. So you are, you have a history of, you know, background of varying and uh, different filmmakers and different studio systems and independent filmmaking. So what I'm curious about, when you work with different directors or filmmaker, filmmakers, do you feel, do you feel like you are imposed uh, by their uh, way of working or do you compromise or do you come to reconciliation with those directors to make a movie as you both uh, imagined? Well, I mean, the best, obviously the best situation is when you're both on the same page and you both have the same idea and, uh, you know, it's a true collaboration. Uh, and I have to say that that films don't always follow that pattern. They're very in various degrees uh, from total collaboration to total dictatorship. And I think, you know, uh, I prefer the collaboration uh, um, situations, obviously, much more. Uh, you know, working for a dictator is not very much fun. Uh, but, uh, I mean, it can be. I, I mean, I have to say, uh, I you know, almost any film that I've ever done, I've learned something and I've tried to find something about it that uh, gave me a sense of fulfillment. You know, whether it was, you know, the people I was working with, a myriad of things that I could think of that would, you know, kind of satisfy my my uh, personal uh, requirements that, you know, somehow I'd be fulfilled by this. But, uh, you know, uh, on the other hand, I almost have never turned down a job. So, I mean, it wasn't that I consciously went after one genre or another genre or a particular director or another director. I just came and I kind of uh, took what came along, and I don't. I I think in my entire career, I don't think I ever turned down a job except for once. Yeah, I know which that. I never, which I didn't like the, you know, I didn't like the material. So, uh, but other than that, you know, almost every job I've ever had has been I found somewhat fulfilling. Yeah. Some of them, some of them, I came home crying from, <laughs> but I think I learned something. Uh, you know, directors can be very harsh. They can be, you know, uh, totally uh, inspirational, or they can be assholes. You know, yeah. I mean, and, yeah. and your job is to try to. I mean, at least the job description is that you know you are in the service of the movie. You are in the service of the director and what he wants you try to make happen. And sometimes, you know, that that you know. That spreads out into a lot of different things. I mean, in, in terms of like, I obviously know a lot more technically than most directors, so I can help them on that level. I also have a lot of experience with actors, and I can, you know, sometimes I can tell them, you know, how they need to deal with their actors, or, you know, there are a lot, you know, lots of areas that I can help a director, you know, in in for, in trying to fulfill his vision, you know, and it's. Uh, I don't know. It was a great career for me. I had a great time. Oh, good to hear that. Can you tell me about that picture you turned down? I know which movie is that. I don't is. remember what. I don't remember the name of it, but I remember it was like a slasher movie. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. lots of blood and yeah. sex, and mm -hmm. which I, you know, I mean, it's fine. Listen, you, know, I do a movie like you know, The Devil's Rejects, which is really, you know, but you know, The Devil's Rejects is artistic. In a yeah, lot of very, ways, you know, yeah, it's like an extraordinary like lot, movie. Yeah. But, uh, you know, this, the other movie that had no redemptive qualities at all. I didn't like the director. I didn't like the script. I thought the material was terrible and they weren't paying me enough. So that was yeah. plenty of reasons not to do it. But I think you were bringing your own insight and your own signature in a way into that movie because that's how I, you know, got to know you first because when i first watched uh the devil rejects and the you know other uh rap zombie movie halloween i realized that there is uh things that are you know that are not very much explored or experimented before on in the in those movies because i remember that you did some uh different uh camera work in 
the devil rejects, which you also have filmed in 16 millimeter, as far as I recall. And I like I like their visuals. Even their storylines are not gripping as other stories sometimes. I like the way th those movies talk to me because you bring your own visual you know, language into it. That's what I like those movies. I mean, that's what I like about those movies. And the next question is, um, well, I don't want to keep you very much busy. So I've got two or three more questions. And the next one is, you know, the filmmaking trends are changing very rapidly. And you come from a history of uh, filming on uh, negative films, which was analog system. Now you're filming for the last 10 years. I know that you are filming on digital capture and some of the directors or filmmakers are not are not very much interested in capturing their images or films in digital media or digital uh, imaging systems. Um, and what do you think about that? And on that hand, I know that filmmaking is now uh, getting very trendy on digital platforms rather than in the theater salons in uh you know in big uh theaters we don't see many films except for the last two or three weeks we are now watching going to those theaters for to see those two different movies uh you know Oppenheimer and the Barbie thing but before those you know this trend I think, Bar I think the Barbie thing was uh Barbie thing was digital wasn't it yeah it's digital it's I think um 65 millimeter digital it's you know large sensor camera they filmed it on array alexa large sensor but i like the visuals of that movie as well and on that rent the I other one I haven't, Oppen seen, I haven't seen either i haven't seen either one i heard a great story about uh Oppenheimer the other day it's really cool that the uh that the uh film itself is is three miles long yeah and the end and it takes three hours. It's a three hour film. It says you could walk the distance of the film in three hours. Yeah, I read that as well. It's like a trading <laughs> meal. It's like a trading meal. You're walking right. and walking, still not reaching to some point. It's, it's a different, you know, mindset. On the other hand, there's, you know, the majority of filmmakers are still choosing digital capture and now well, I mean, it, you know, I mean, it's become a it's become a joke because it's, you know, the price points now are ridiculous. I mean, unless you're, you know, unless you have enormous amounts of money, trying to shoot a film in, uh, on on uh, a a, a non digital format is practically impossible. But on the other hand, you know, I mean, I mean, I love film, and I'm actually looking back at that documentary I was originally talking about, The Meadowlands. You'll see stuff in that film, right in the opening, that you could have never gotten on a digital format. Never. You know, it just has like yeah. a, this almost dream quality about it. Yeah. Uh, not to say that digital isn't really beautiful. My just my daughter just did a movie, which you may be aware of. Yeah, yeah. I watched that uh, on the pl huh? digital platform. And I liked it. Did you watch it? Yeah. This Tartling Girl, it, it was a very good movie. Oh, and yeah. It's really good. But you know uh, her uh, her uh, cinematographer, you know, wanted it to look like film, and they had you know they did they did uh, they added grain to it. They added what's called um, uh, what is the effect called? I can't remember. But there is a you know there's some specific uh, uh, film effects that that are artifacts of shooting with a with a film camera, like the film reflecting off, like light reflecting off the back of the film, yeah. which reflects back onto the film and double exposes it in a way that makes it look really weird and dreamy. So, you know, but there, you know, it's incredible the amount of, uh, of, of, of manipulation that they've been able to do to simulate film. And it's, you know, Simi, you know, it's whatever, you know, it's a look. Yeah, you know, definitely, it is. definitely it is. And there are lots some... of work looks, there are lots of looks that work. Yeah. You know, and I think there's a romantic quality about film that was, you know, that that is difficult to reproduce, but I think it's possible. I mean, I've seen some of Roger Deacon's work that's on, on digital. Yeah. It's beautiful, really beautiful. 
So, you know, I, I mean, to me, it's pretty much of an economic decision at this point. Yeah. You know, if I mean, if I could afford to shoot film, yeah, maybe I would do it. Maybe I wouldn't, you know, because there are a lot of disadvantages of shooting film also. Yeah. As you said, it's more economic, uh, economical now. It depends on the budget and other terms. That's very, you know, right. Uh, so I mean, if you're going to do a short film for yourself. Yeah. You know, you know, I, I, I love digital know, a lot. It gives me, yeah, it gives me a lot of opportunities and it gives gives me a lot of freedom because if I don't have enough money, if I don't have enough money for lab laboratory work, if I don't have enough money for uh, film uh, stocks, yes. I I rather like digital and I still like digital a lot because even with a small DCLR, you know, with mirrorless cameras, when I watch them, I'm impressed and whether they are super uh, super 35 or whether they are full frame it, 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 i cannot even notice the difference most of the times yeah i mean particularly with the new kodak stocks some yeah. of the new kodak stocks are practically grainless anyway yeah but um, but now you anyway can it's, all, it's all kind of nostalgia you know i mean the great thing that you know is that digital has done is it made the resources universally available to yeah. filmmakers and I but you know I don't see that the quality of film has improved <laughs> exactly. I think it still gets yeah you know yeah. I mean I'm thinking that you know back in the 70s and the 80s when I was you know first starting out of all the incredible movies that were made then you know that we used to wait breathlessly for you know the next Godar film the next Truffaut film the next uh, Scorsese film, the next uh, Kurosawa film, you know? I mean, there were so many great films there, you know, and it wasn't so universal. Everybody did couldn't pick up a camera. Yeah. Now I think everybody picks up a camera and they think oh, automatically they can make a film, but the actual camera itself is probably the least important element of the process. You know, I mean, I've learned over point. the yeah, years. Yeah. And I mean, I've learned over the years what really makes a difference is the writing and who, you know, what that's, I mean, you know, with a great script, you can shoot it on, a, you know, on any camera and it's going to be a great script without the, you know, without the, you know, or a great actor, you know, look at Laurel's film, that young lady in the, who acts, in, you know, in her film, yeah. how incredible she is and how believable that is. That's what yeah. makes that film, not the film stock. Not the way it was shot; it was the you know the performances and the exactly. content, and the exactly. truth. That, yeah. I mean, what do they, I mean? What do they say? Tr film is truth at twenty four frames a second, right? So I mean, the <laughs> essence, you know, the essence of film, and I think you know, as an art form, is that it has it's, it, you know, it's a totally engrossing form of art that pulls you into it, that you know has the ability. To, to tap into your dreams, you know? And I don't know any other art that does that, you know? Yeah, exactly. That's why, That's why. I, you know, when people ask me why you like cinema so much, I tell them that you can find almost all of arts in cinema. You can find yes, painting, you can find architecture, you can find writing liter literature. So that's why I like about it. And as you say, the content material is, um, to some extent, to much more you know bigger extent is more important i guess i agree with you on that because sometimes what you watch doesn't matter that much i mean the the story how it's told in a different way matters a lot at least to me and when i watched laurel's films i didn't even think about which camera was it filmed on or um uh, what kind of um you know lighting or uh you know I didn't even think about if they film handheld or they put it on a tripod because the characters and the story just, you know, got me into the film. They just pull you in and that's yeah. it. That's, and yeah. th th that's yeah. what I'm interested in. The only thing that made me think when I was watching it, I, I like that. It's it's kind of like the movies like the early 70s or 80s French movies. I mean, the way the story is told, not the visuals, because the visuals are different. I noticed that. I even didn't notice the grain or the color scheme a lot because the story is much more gripping to me than the technical side. And coming from a technical background, 
when I watch the movies, I don't want to think about that well as I don't want to think about it either because the other day, for example, I watched again on at home on TV, uh, Quentin Tarantino's movie, uh, The Hateful Eight, and I know that it's filmed on seventy millimeter. Even it's you know filmed on a cell phone camera, I think I would still love it because yeah. the story is very gripping and taking you in. And I, I think, as you say. Um, the content part of the filmmaking story is much more interesting and unique in many terms. And for the last final uh, question, I'm I'm curious about uh, which filmmakers did you enjoy or would you like to work with, uh, and which movies did you like the most? Of mine or of yeah, of yours, yeah, yours. Well, probably the favorite, my, I mean, I think I told you this once before. I think maybe my favorite movie uh, that I ever did was Animal Factory with Steve. Yeah. 2000. Yeah. Well, yeah but, I you know, I mean, at the time, it, you know, at the time it was, you know, it didn't seem to me so extraordinary. But, you know, I look at it, you know, 20 years later, it's pretty an amazing movie. With, yeah, with including all, I mean, all the actors were great. The script was really wonderful. My wife worked on the movie. It was a fabulous experience. Steve is still my friend today. You know, it's like, uh, it was just a great, you know, uh, a great confluence of factors that make, uh, that, you know, if, I mean, if I got to make a single choice about a movie, I think that probably is it. You know, uh, in the early 2000s, that movie Animal Factory is one of the movies that were sold a lot on uh, home media in Turkey. It was very popular in the early 2000s, I recall that. But at the time, I didn't know that you filmed it because I wasn't, I didn't see any movies you made before at 2000. But I liked that movie a lot. And I didn't even know Steve Buscemi directed. I recall that um, some actors like the, the boy from Terminator 2 acts in it. And there are some good actors in it, like um, Danny Trio or some other guy. Danny Trejo, yeah. 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 But, uh, and the young boy, you know, um, the prison story is very captivating for Turkish audience. And when I used to go to the uh, home video, you know, stores, at the time, it was like one of the most picked DVDs. Huh. And at that time, I I just thought, okay, I don't like prison stories. Sorry, let me just um, hmm. just gave me some warning. Anyway, uh, we have to finish our conversation in five minutes because the recording time is limited. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, and I know that the visuals and the storyline. I recall that I have to watch it again because I forgot. It's like twenty-two or twenty-three years past. But I, the first moment I watched it, I recall that I liked that movie a lot. And now I think it's regarded as a cult movie on internet forums or websites, because from time to time I come across that movie as well. Anyway, the final question that I want to ask you is, you know, I, I know that um, you come from a background of a European filmmaker mindset. You like their movies, you like French New Wave, you like Italian movies, you like British movies, I know that. Uh, so what I'm curious about, what do you think about the future of Hollywood system? Because now there is some sort of uh, strike protests going on. Do you think the system in Hollywood or the filmmaking industry in, in the United States is going to change for a better uh, way or it's going to change drastically in a very different way? I don't know. I'm a, I'm afraid for the uh, I'm afraid for the theatrical aspect of, of being able to watch movies, you know, in a group uh, atmosphere. I think you know one of the things that I used to think about about film going to the movies was kind of like going to the going to the church or going to the uh, a wedding maybe. You know, because it was a group experience, yeah. you know? It was like saying hallelujah together. The feeling that you get saying hallelujah <laughs> by yourself 
as opposed to being in a group of a hundred people who say hallelujah together. That's an enormous difference, don't you think? In the no, way I that it affects so. you. So I think, I mean, that, uh, I mean, that's my major fear is that, you know, everybody's going to see movies at home by themselves, you know, on big, maybe on big screens with good, with good sound, good quality. Mm -hmm. But nothing is kind of equal to sitting in an audience and laughing with a bunch of other people at something funny. You know, everybody, it's, uh, you know, and I say it's like a church experience in the sense, not that it's religious, but that it has overtones of uh, an energy being created by a group of people together, you know, like a bullfight or a sports event, you know? I mean, you know, watching a sports event, you know, in a stadium with 100,000 people is very different than watching it on a TV, right? I mean, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? Yeah, I know and the so trends. Much, I mean, that's, I think that's my main fear is yeah. that that is going to go away. Movies are not going to go away. Movies are never going to go away. But, you know, the, uh, I think that, you know, is kind of, you know, that to me, that's a little bit unfortunate, you know, but maybe it'll, I mean, I don't know. I can't pronosticate the future. I don't know if that's going to happen or not. I just, you know, maybe it'll happen on a smaller scale. Maybe, you know, you'll go to the local theater and, you know, and it, the other thing is that films are so, they make the whole experience so expensive. You know, when I was a kid, you know, you go for, you know, you know, $2, you go to the movies and you buy, a, you know, you for a buck, you buy a, popcorn and you sit and watch a movie for three hours that doesn't you know that kind of doesn't exist anymore yeah you know it's expensive it's like uh you know it's just not it's not what it was i'm also a little bit concerned about the about the see about uh ai you know which everybody yeah. is i think i don't think it's ever going to replace real artists i think it's going to replace a lot of mediocre artists uh but, you know, I think, I think you know, the bottom line is that people are always going to be moved by the performance of other people. You know, mm -hmm. an AI can, doesn't have, you know, is not a human. It doesn't have human experiences. And I think what, you know, what is interesting about art is it reflects human experiences, not yeah. machine experiences. So it's never going to be this. It's never, it's never really going to replace art. It's going to replace a bunch of people who are wannabes, maybe, you know, who don't, you know, who just want to, you know, just put out something with their name on it. Yeah. You know, or, you know, it may replace video game scripts, but I don't think, I mean, I'm not worried about it replacing art. I don't think that's ever going to. Mm. That's a very interesting point. And I, again, agree with what you say. And now, considering that if I had, if I had, made this conversation with uh, AI cinematographer, a digital cinematographer who's not, who doesn't exist in the real. What is an AI cinematographer? I don't know yet. I think there will be <laughs> some AI creators that make films maybe online. No, no, right. That will, to... create, that will create visuals. That, yeah. that, 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 but, that, but that's also, I mean, that also concerns me. I mean, what really concerns me more than anything, I think, is, is truth. The the, diff the difficulty that that it is becoming, how difficult it is becoming to discern what the truth is. Yeah. Not that it wasn't always difficult, but it is becoming more and more difficult because of the simulation of truth. And truth is truth only has one answer: truth. Yeah, exactly. That's you know at the beginning of the conversation. Conversation, you said that uh, film is like twenty four frames per second. Truth. Yes. And I think we um, are... that's not original, by the way. I don't know who said that, but I mean... <laughs> the way around. It was like 24 frames a, a, a lie. But the way you put it is, I think, more interesting to me. And as you say, if if we lose that aspect of filmmaking as 24 frames per, per second truth, things could get just a little bit uglier, maybe. I don't know. But I, I get They're your... already ugly. They're already yeah, look exactly. at your country. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I definitely... look at both our countries. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, both of our countries are like sisters now, in many ways. Anyway, it was a very nice, uh, you know, talk with you, having this conversation with you. It was very important and very precious to me. So I'm very thankful to you for accepting the offer and. 
And again, we're happy to see you after like 12 years. Yeah, it was nice. I hope we, I hope we get, to, we love Turkey so much and we, you know, we would love to come visit you again. You should, <laughs> you should. Definitely. There are so many beautiful places in Turkey to see. And, you know, Turkey is just like the United States. There are different, different. I know that when you travel uh, across the United States, you meet different kind of cultures and people. It's, it's very, it's very same for Turkey as well. So thank you very much again. And uh, I should say my regards and my thanks as well to your beautiful wife, uh, Lisa, as well. And um, have a good evening. Thank you very much, Phil.